On today's episode, we're talking about the first versions of some of the biggest sites on the web. We're talking about one-page business plans and 100 days without fear. Money isn't the point. A business should be about lifestyle, impact, and meaning. And you can still earn a ridiculous amount of money without sacrificing any of that. But you need to set your priorities. And that, to me, is what a lifestyle business is all about. Today's episode is brought to you by Fizzle, the company I co-founded to help entrepreneurs just like you navigate the sometimes stormy waters of building a business. Fizzle features the step-by-step -step roadmap for independent entrepreneurs and the most active and supportive community of lifestyle business builders on the web. Get access to the roadmap, weekly coaching, and hundreds of hours of video training, all included as part of your free trial. That's right, just visit fizzle.co slash lifestyle to get a very special five-week free trial. That's fizzle.co slash lifestyle. Welcome back to Lifestyle Business Weekly, the show and weekly curated email for people interested in lifestyle businesses and independent entrepreneurship. I'm Corbett Barr. Up first today, let's talk about some of the biggest sites on the web and their humble beginnings. Take a look at this, Facebook. We all know Facebook famously started as a directory for people at Harvard. But did you know that it looked like this? Do you remember back when it was called the Facebook, not just Facebook? Now take a look at Yahoo, which was or actually originally known as Jerry's Guide to the World Wide Web, named after co-founder Jerry Yang. And here is Amazon. Just look at this site. It's unrecognizable from the Amazon that we know today, the, the company that provides cloud computing services, the company that builds their own tablets and gadgets and sells everything under the sun, and now is talking about drone delivery. Amazon is this behemoth today, but back in 1999, this is what it looked like. It's pretty incredible when you take a minute and take a look. There are several things you can take away from this. We're not looking at these just to ridicule how simple these companies were in the beginning, but more to think about how everything we know about today really starts as something rather small. Everything that's huge has humble beginnings. And you should think about that when you're creating your next project or thinking about your next project. We have this temptation to try to imagine the massive scope of our ideas and how big and great everything should become, but we forget that everybody has to start somewhere. And the real danger is that you don't get started at all. So have your big vision, that's great, but just remember everybody starts small and it's okay if you break off just a little tiny piece of your vision and focus on that first because you have to get traction somewhere, you have to start building an audience, and it's much easier to do it if you bite off a very small piece. Now let's talk about business plans. Business plans are this notoriously misused tool. On one hand, you have people who obsess over business plans and create these impossibly long documents full of fantasies and guesses that end up just sitting on a shelf and are never referred to again. And then on the other hand, you have most people, most businesses that probably are started without a business plan at all, um, or something very small. You may have heard that famously Southwest Airlines started with a business plan that was written on the back of a napkin. I tend to think that that concept is actually better than writing this big, long, detailed plan. However, the real purpose of a business plan is to help you think through some of the potential downsides of this idea. It's really easy to get sort of myopic when you're thinking about your idea, your business idea, and it's easy to kind of forget about where the holes might be. So a really good business plan should help you um, uncover where some of those holes might be. At Fizzle, we prefer that people use this one-page business plan template. We actually call it a business sketch template because a business plan, a really good one, is really just a sketch 
that can change over time, but reflects your current vision of what reality might be. Our business sketch template, or BST, covers things like your product and your audience and your solution and um, your differentiator, where revenue might come from, what your elevator pitch will be. All of these little things that matter, including also your personal fit. How great a fit is this business idea for you? The business sketch template that we have created and that we used inside of Fizzle is now available for the first time publicly. And uh, at the uh, link below, you can go check it out um, and download it for free right now. And it really will only take a couple of hours for you to imagine how your business idea fits into these various categories. And hopefully you can uncover some of the holes that might exist in your own business plan. And finally, today we have a fun project called 100 Days of Fear. Michelle Poehler was uh, moved recently from Venezuela to New York City to pursue a master's degree. And as part of her master's assignments, she was told that she needed to do some sort of project for 100 days. Well, Michelle decided to do something rather bold and confront her fears one day at a time for 100 days. And at the same time, she decided to film her fears. So for the past 100 days, she's been filming herself confronting things like having a tarantula crawl on her um, or posing nude for a drawing class and everything in between. This is a really fun project. Her YouTube channel is amazing. And you can learn a couple of things from Michelle's project. First, you'll notice in the videos, um, they're very well done, but Michelle herself doesn't talk much. In fact, there's several episodes where she doesn't talk at all. And I thought this was interesting because we all feel like um, if you have, uh, if you want to produce videos, a lot of times that you have to be on camera or you have to be addressing the camera a lot. And I think she's showing us here that that doesn't necessarily have to be true. And um, despite not talking, she has amassed nearly 20,000 subscribers on YouTube. And I believe she's close to 4 million views on YouTube. The other interesting thing here is that it makes you think about how you don't necessarily have to intend to create a business in order to build something of value. Paul Graham has said that we shouldn't try to build startups because it's a premature optimization. Instead, we should just try to create things that are interesting at first. And I think that's great advice. Michelle here has created something that's very interesting. And I don't know if this will turn into a business, but you can imagine that if you had a YouTube channel with 20,000 subscribers and several mi million views, that could be an incredible asset for whatever it is that Michelle decides to do next. So uh, if you're stumped on business ideas or you're tired of thinking about how you're gonna earn revenue, maybe take the opposite approach for a while and just try to create something interesting like Michelle Poehler has done here with 100 Days of Fear. All right, that's it for episode two of Lifestyle Business Weekly. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. We're just getting started here and I would love your feedback. Write me anywhere you might find me on Twitter, Facebook, in a YouTube comment, or if you're a subscriber of Lifestyle Business Weekly, you can always hit reply and reach me directly. I'd love to hear what you think. If you have a link that you think would be good for one of the week's episodes, you can send those to me as well. Um, so until next week, thanks so much and I'll see you soon. Get all of today's links and many more articles and resources for lifestyle business builders just like you in one convenient curated weekly email. Head over to lifestylebusinessweekly.com and sign up for free. I'll send you one email a week, including a link to the latest episode of this show, new blog posts from me, and resources that will help you make more progress towards building a business that matters. That's lifestylebusinessweekly.com.